Duramaster Air Disc Brake Maintenance. This program will cover a basic introduction to Duramasters, new vehicle checks, minor inspections, relining and major inspections, and lubrication procedures. Duramaster features include a swing away caliper, slide out brake shoes, a standard air chamber, replaceable slide pins and bushings, and external lining wear indicators. In this close-up view of the lining wear indicators, the top shows the slide pin when linings are unworn. The bottom shows that as linings wear, the caliper slides inward along the pins. When the caliper is within one-eighth inch of the end of the pin, the linings must be replaced. Duramaster features also include a sealed and lubed caliper, similar applications as drum brakes, a commonality of parts between models, and a wide range of applications. Here's a detailed look at Duramaster applications. The ADB 1540 is used on front axles up to 12,000 pounds gross axle weight rating. The ADB 1560 is for single drive or trailer axles to 23,000 GAWR, single drive axles to 24,000 GAWR on fire trucks, tandem drive or trailer axles to 46,000 GAWR, and single front axles from 12,000 to 20,000 GAWR. The ADB 1760 is used with tandem drive axles with certain airbag suspensions. The benefits of the Duramaster features are less downtime and lower maintenance costs, the potential for increased payloads, lower lifetime costs, reduced parts inventory, and improved vehicle performance. With the caliper swung down, here's a close-up view of the major components starting from the top. The rotor, slide pin retainer, torque plate, caliper, automatic slack adjuster, standard air chamber, slide pin, and the brake linings with integral anti-rattle clips. Here's a cutaway view of the caliper to show its operation. The caliper works like a simple C-clamp. The movement of the slack adjuster turns the power shaft, which moves the power shaft nut along the threads to clamp the linings on both sides of the rotor. Now let's look at new vehicle checks that should be made before the vehicle is placed in service. While you do these checks, be sure the brakes are released and the wheels are blocked. On vehicles with spring brakes, be sure to follow the manufacturer's recommendations for caging the spring brakes before you begin. And always wear safety glasses when performing any maintenance procedures. The list of new vehicle checks includes checking the slack adjuster for a label to be sure it's for disc brake applications, checking air chamber position, checking the clevis position, measuring free stroke, checking for binding, inspecting the slide pins, and checking slide pin installation. At the upper left, you can see the label designating the ASA for disc brake applications. At the lower right, you can see how to check the air chamber position. Chamber studs must be in the correct position in the slots. For a five and a half inch slack adjuster, the chamber studs go at the far end of the slots away from the power shaft. For a 5 inch slack adjuster, the chamber studs go at the end of the slots nearest the power shaft. New style brackets for front brakes have a smaller offset than the old brackets and therefore eliminate the need for offset clevises. Also, the new bracket can be used with either type 16 or type 20 chambers. The next check is to measure the clevis position. If a template is not available, use a tape measure. Measure from the bottom of the air chamber to the center of the hole for the large clevis pin. For an offset clevis, the measurement must be 3.34 inches. 
for all others, the measurement must be 2.62 inches. Refer to Section 4 of Rockwell Field Maintenance Manual 4M for more details. If you have templates, be sure to use the correct one. The green template is used if you have an offset clevis. The yellow template is used with all straight clevises. The templates have a mark to indicate the center line of the large clevis pin. If the clevis position is incorrect, check again to make sure the spring brake is fully retracted. If the spring brake is fully retracted, reposition the clevis to the correct position. Next, measure the free stroke with the template. The templates have marks to indicate the allowable range of free stroke. If the free stroke is incorrect, adjust the brake with the automatic slack adjuster. Be sure to remove the slack adjuster pawl before making any adjustments to prevent damage to the pawl. Also, be sure to reinstall the pawl when the necessary adjustments are completed, or else the slack adjuster won't work. Now, check for binding. To do this, move the air chamber from side to side. The caliper should move freely on the slide pins. If it does not, inspect the slide pins, bushings, and retainers for damage or improper installation. Next, check the slide pins. Make sure the slide pins are free of paint, masking tape, undercoating, or anything else that might prevent free movement of the caliper. Finally, be sure to measure the exposed length of the slide pins. When installed properly, slide pins extend approximately 9 16 inches past the inboard caliper boss. Now let's look at the procedures involved in a minor inspection. As we move through the minor inspections and other maintenance procedures, we will refer to the Duramaster maintenance wall chart which is available from Rockwell. As the wall chart indicates, minor inspections are performed four times during the life of the linings with the wheels on. Be sure the brakes are released, the spring brakes are caged, and the wheels are blocked to prevent the vehicle from moving. First, check the function of the slack adjuster. If the slack adjuster is not working properly, the brake is not working properly. Checking the slack adjuster includes checking the clevis position, the free stroke, and the condition of the slack adjuster. To measure the clevis position, the procedure is the same as a new vehicle check. You can measure with the template as shown or with a tape measure. If the clevis position is incorrect, first check for complete retraction of the spring brake push rod. If the spring brake is fully retracted, then check for internal binding in the caliper. You can check for binding by removing the slack adjuster clevis pins. If the chamber push rod retracts further, it indicates binding inside the caliper. If these two checks show no problem, then reposition the clevis to the correct position. Next, measure the free stroke of the chamber. If the measurement is incorrect, check the gap between the clevis and the quick connect collar. Wear between the collar and clevis can cause increased stroke. If the gap exceeds 60 thousandths of an inch, replace the clevis and reset the free stroke. If the gap is correct, but the free stroke is wrong, perform a major inspection to find the cause. Also, check for wear of the clevis pins and the bushing in the arm of the slack adjuster. Check the condition of the slack adjuster. Inspect the boot for cuts or tears and replace as necessary. If the boot is damaged, remove the pawl and inspect it. If the pawl teeth are rounded or worn, replace the pawl and, if necessary, rebuild the slack adjuster. Also, check the condition of the grease. If the grease is dry or contaminated, rebuild the slack adjuster. If the grease is good, replace the boot and lube the slack adjuster. Check for excessive corrosion around the splines and clean as necessary. If the chamber stroke was incorrect, remove the pawl, back off the adjusting nut, and install the pawl again. Then, cycle the brake several times while watching the nut for movement. If the nut moves, the slack adjuster is working. If the nut does not move, 
rebuild the slack adjuster. Be sure to reinstall the pawl when adjustments are completed. Also, be sure you check the calipers for binding. You can check for binding by moving the air chamber from side to side to make sure the caliper moves freely on the slide pins. Be sure to check the slide pins. They must be clean and free of damage so the caliper can move freely. The slide pins must be free of foreign material, nicks, burrs, or anything other than normal road dirt that could prevent caliper movement. Next, check the wear of the slide pin bushings. Try to insert the clearance wire gauge from Kent Moore Duramaster Tool Kit number J-34064-B between the slide pin and the lower inboard bushing. If the gauge fits, the bushing is worn. If the bushing is worn, replace all four caliper bushings. Next, check and inspect the lining wear indicators. If the linings are usable, the slide pins will extend well past the inboard caliper boss. If the slide pins and boss are within one eighth inch, the linings are worn and must be replaced. Never change the linings on just one wheel end. It's recommended that you always replace the linings on both wheel ends of the same axle. Next, inspect the rotors for cracks, deep scoring, or other damage always replace damaged rotors. Cracked or deeply scored rotors are obvious, but heat checking is a judgment call. If heat checking is light as shown here, the rotor can be used as long as it exceeds minimum thickness. Heavy heat checking may require replacement of the rotor. Always replace with the correct type of rotor for your application. Rockwell recommends that ductile iron rotors be used for tractor drive axle and trailer applications and that gray iron rotors be used on steering axles and on straight truck and bus drive axles. The next areas we'll cover are relining and major inspections. Major inspections are performed at reline with the wheels off and include all the steps involved in a minor inspection. Again, be sure the brakes are released, the spring brakes are caged, and that the wheels are blocked to prevent the vehicle from moving. And if necessary, disconnect air lines to allow the caliper to swing down. To begin, remove the upper slide pin. To do this, remove the cotter pin, loosen the nut on the retainer, depress the retainer and remove the slide pin using the slide hammer from Kent Moore Tool Kit J-34064-B. If necessary, use penetrating oil and tap the retainer to break loose any corrosion. The next step is to remove the linings. The outboard pad must be removed first to provide room to remove the inboard pad. Push down hard on the edge of the pad to compress the clip while you push the pad toward the notches in the center of the caliper. Lift the pad out through the notches. Repeat the procedure for the inboard pad. Now inspect the caliper for wear caused by the shoe tabs. If the shoe tabs wear the caliper more than 15 thousandths of an inch at any of four wear points, replace the caliper housing. If the caliper is worn, the shoes will not be held in place correctly. At reline, you must check the condition of the caliper boots on both ends of the axle. To do so, remove the paw from the slack adjuster to prevent damage, and then turn the adjusting nut on the slack adjuster to extend the piston and boot. Clean the boot and inspect for cuts and tears. Be sure to swing the caliper up and inspect the other side of the boot. If the boot is cut or burned, it must be replaced. While replacing the boot, check for contamination inside the caliper and rebuild the caliper if necessary. Next, check the caliper bushing diameter. Try to insert the plug gauge from the Duramaster toolkit through the upper outboard caliper bushing. Turn the gauge 90 degrees and repeat. If the bushing accepts the gauge, the bushing is worn. If any bushing is worn, replace all four caliper bushings. 
Use the drivers from the toolkit and a mallet to drive out the bushings. You can use the drivers and a press if one is available. If you use a press, support the caliper boss because the force of the press can crack the boss. If a bushing is worn completely through, check the bore for wear. If the bore is worn, replace the caliper housing. Always install the outboard caliper bushings first. Caliper bushings have a knurled outer diameter and do not need to be burnished. The outboard bushing is shorter than the inboard one, so be sure to use the correct bushing. Insert the outboard driver through the inboard boss to get the correct alignment. Drive or press the bushing into the center of the bore. Don't let the bushing extend past the ends of the bore. If you use a press, be sure to support the caliper boss. When you install the inboard bushings, insert the inboard driver through the installed outboard bushing to get the correct alignment. Then, drive or press the bushing into the center of the bore. At reline, always inspect the slide pin. If the slide pin is worn through the chrome, it must be replaced. Another thing that must be done at reline is to inspect and measure the rotors. A solid rotor must be at least .779 inches thick. A vented rotor must be at least 1.626 inches thick. Always replace any rotor that is less than minimum thickness. Use a dial caliper or micrometer to measure rotor thickness. Another check that needs to be made is the power shaft. Be sure the slack adjuster is firmly mounted on the power shaft. Also, make the same checks of the slack adjuster as you would during a minor inspection. In addition, check for excessive wear between the splines of the slack adjuster and the power shaft. Excessive play will cause excessive stroke. Replace the power shaft or the slack adjuster as necessary. Next, remove the pawl to prevent damage to it and turn the slack adjusting nut to fully retract the caliper piston. Then, put the caliper over the rotor. Install the upper slide pin and check the free movement of the caliper back and forth on the slide pins. If movement is restricted, check the slide pins, bushings, and retainers for damage or excessive wear. After checking the movement, swing the caliper back down to install the linings. Now, let's take a look at the linings. The inboard linings have an integral anti-rattle clip. With a solid disc, the inboard and outboard linings are the same thickness, but they are not interchangeable because of a different shape clip. With a vented disc, the inboard lining is thicker than the outboard lining. Also remember that linings are not interchangeable between brake models because of the different radius of the linings. Linings are identified on the clips as inner and outer for proper installation. Here is a view of the outboard lining. It has a different shape clip from the inboard lining. Remember, inboard and outboard linings are not interchangeable, and linings are not interchangeable between brake models. When installing linings, always install the inboard pad first. If you install the outboard pad first, you won't have room to install the inboard pad. Fit the shoe tabs through the notches in the caliper and press down hard on the edge of the pad to compress the clip while pushing the lining against the piston. The back of the pad must be flat against the piston and the back of the clip must be over the top of the piston. Repeat this procedure for the outboard pad and push it against the outboard side of the caliper. The back of the outboard lining must be flat against the caliper and the back of the clip must be over the caliper. Also remember that aftermarket linings are not made to Rockwell specifications and that using aftermarket linings may cause caliper damage and result in higher maintenance costs. To reduce corrosion and make lower slide pin removal easier in the future, put elastic sealant on the inboard end of the lower slide pin retainer hole. When you raise the caliper back into position, pin retention is very important. The slide pins must be installed correctly for the brake to work properly. 
When correctly installed, the notches in the slide pin and the retainer are engaged. Make sure the notch in the retainer is toward the bore for the slide pin. Press down on the retainer and push in the slide pin. When the notch is engaged, the retainer will snap out. Measure the slide pin to make sure it's installed correctly. The pin must extend approximately 9 sixteenths of an inch past the inboard caliper boss. Push the pin as far outboard as possible while keeping the notches engaged. When the pin is installed correctly, tighten the retainer nut to 60 foot-pounds and then tighten the nut to the next slot, but do not exceed a torque value of 80 foot-pounds. Install a new cotter pin through the nut and retainer. The next area we'll cover is lubrication procedures. Lubrication is vital for correct operation. The caliper should be lubed at least twice a year. The slack adjuster should be lubed at least four times during the life of the linings, at minor inspections, or at regular chassis lube intervals. The slack adjuster and caliper can be lubed with the wheels on or off. Refer to Section 2 of Field Maintenance Manual 4M for the recommended lubricant. The correct method of lubricating the caliper depends on the location of the grease fitting. If the fitting is located in the end cap, as shown here, simply grease the caliper until new grease purges from the relief fitting. Note that there is no need to adjust the brake after this procedure because you have not de-adjusted the brake. If the fitting is located on the caliper boss next to the relief fitting, the correct way to lubricate the caliper is a little more involved and it requires a brake adjustment when lubrication is completed. In this case, the first step in lubrication is to remove the pawl to prevent damaging it and turn the slack adjusting nut to extend the piston until the inboard lining is against the rotor. Next, lube the caliper until the grease purges at the relief valve. When grease purges at the relief valve, cover the valve and continue lubing until the grease purges at the power shaft cap seal. Excess grease or air in the caliper will cause the linings to drag, so you must purge excess grease from the caliper each time you lubricate it. To do this, remove the relief fitting. Turn the slack adjusting nut to retract the caliper piston and force excess grease through the hole for the relief fitting. Reinstall the caliper relief fitting. Make sure you do not get grease on the linings during the lubrication procedure or poor brake performance will result. To adjust the brake after lubrication, reline, or overhaul, first remove the pawl to prevent damaging it. Then, turn the slack adjusting nut until the inboard lining is against the rotor. Then, back off the adjusting nut three quarters of a turn. Check the free stroke of the chamber. The stroke must be seven eighths to one and one eighth inches. If necessary, adjust the stroke with the adjusting nut and reinstall the pawl assembly. Finally, lube the slack adjuster until new grease purges at the relief valve in the pawl cap screw. Doing the job right is the most important goal. So in summary, remember that new vehicle checks are essential to get the vehicle into service problem free. Minor inspections are important because they prevent major problems. Major inspections must be done at reline to prevent major problems and proper lubrication is vital for satisfactory performance of the caliper and the automatic slack adjuster. And after any service, always remember to uncage the spring brakes and test the brake system before putting the vehicle into service. Also remember that complete maintenance details for the Duramaster air disc brake can be found in Field Maintenance Manual 4M.